The AC football team heads to San Antonio for a clash with the Cardinals. I'm Sharon Murawski. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll get you ready for ACU and Incarnate Word and take you to Denmark and back in 30 minutes flat. It's the Ken Collins Show right now. Welcome to week eight of the Ken Collum Show presented by Lawrence Hall. I'm Grant Boone, joined by ACU senior journalism major Sharon Imaroski and the head football coach of the ACU Wildcats, Ken Collins. Today in San Antonio, the Wildcats try to even their Southland Conference record when they take on the Cardinals of the University of the Incarnate Word. Coach, it's been a tough couple of weeks for your team. You have a chance to go with a win today. How about this? 15 and 15 since you went Division I, and 7-7 seven and seven in the Southland Conference since you rejoined the league last year. That's pretty good big picture. Are you trying to, to keep both the big picture and the immediate uh, in focus, or, or is it just about this week's game? We haven't won a game in a while, <laughs> and, and, it's been, and it seems excruciatingly long. So the number one thing is we need to win. And however you can make those numbers work out, that's okay with me. You'll leave that to me, right? Yes, okay. yes that's right. We, we, need, we need a Saturday afternoon where we play well from, from start to finish. Coach, Incarnate Word always brings out a big alumni crowd, and also with fall break, there's a lot of students going down. Having such a big crowd on the road, does that affect you guys? Well, we're, we're always pumped. When, when, we, when we have fans in the stands, it encourages our guys, and it just makes it more of an exciting atmosphere. And... We always have a good turnout in San Antonio, so it'll be it'll be good to see it. There are a lot. In fact, every time we've played down there, our fans have outnumbered the Incarnate Word fans. Right. So we hope for that again today. In fact, if you're watching, come out to Benson Stadium on the Incarnate Word campus right off the Highway 287 there in San Antonio. Well, we will talk about that game between ACU and Incarnate Word a little bit later on in the show. But when we come back, highlights and Coach Collum's analysis of last week's homecoming game. Roger with us for the Ken Collum Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Last Saturday at Shotwell, a huge homecoming crowd watched ACU host Sam Houston State. To look back at the highlights, here's Daniel Zapata. After a two-game road trip, the Wildcats returned to Shotwell Stadium for their 2015 homecoming game against the number 11th ranked FCS team in the nation, Sam Houston State. It didn't take long, however, for the Bearcats to get things rolling as the flea flicker goes for 64 yards and gives Sam Houston the early lead after less than two minutes of play. After an ACU interception, Sam Houston continued their offensive explosion in the first quarter with a nine-yard pass for a touchdown to go up 14-zip. The Bearcats would find the end zone again in the first quarter, capping off an 81-yard drive lasting less than 90 seconds to go up 21 to nothing. To finish off ACU's nightmare first quarter, Sam Houston would fake the kick and reach the end zone on the 9-yard run to quiet the Cats at 28 to nothing. Over their last three games, ACU has given up an average of over 17 points in the first quarter. Freshman quarterback Dallas Seeley would lead the offense down the field, ending the 11-play 80-yard drive with a rushing touchdown to put the Cats on the board in the second quarter. Seeley finished the game with 92 yards through the air, 17 rushing yards, and a touchdown. On the next Sam Houston drive, the Wildcats defense was able to force a three and out as a tip pass from junior Josh Bloom forced the punt and shifted the momentum to ACU. The Wildcats unfortunately wouldn't be able to do anything with it as they headed into halftime trailing 35 to seven. The Bearcats picked things up where they left off in the second half completing this 10 yard pass for a touchdown early in the third quarter. Touchdown, the Wildcat offense would find more success in the second half as junior running back Adrian Duncan scores from 14 yards out for ACU's second touchdown of the game. Duncan led all ACU rushers with 41 yards on six carries. 
Junior quarterback Parker McKenzie struggled through most of this one, but was able to find junior Carl Whitley for a 50-yard connection that would move ACU into Sam Houston territory in the fourth quarter. The Wildcats would wrap things up with a seven-yard touchdown pass from freshman Cody Ennis to senior Jamie Walker. ACU moves to 2-3 and three in conference with their first home loss of the season. Thanks, Daniel. Final score, 49-21 in favor of the top 10 in the nation Bearcats of Sam Houston State. Coach, this looks every bit like a top 10 team, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, and you, you can tell why those guys make long, deep runs into the playoffs because they are – they're built for that and you don't just all of a sudden put that together that's been years of playoffs mm -hmm. years of going to the national championship game and they've uh, they've got it going on and and really you tip your hat to them they've put a special program together there over the years and ultimately uh, that's where we want to be we get this stadium built we get our infrastructure in in place and ultimately i think uh, i think we'll be there but when your team which is Quite frankly, third year Division One. when you're outmatched against a team like that, you have to absolutely play your very best, don't you? And that, that's something that you talked about after the game. They made plays. They did some things to disrupt us, but there were some plays we didn't make, right? Yes, yes. and, and uh, you know, good teams are going to make good plays. Good players are going to make are going to make plays. You hear that all the time, and it's really true. But uh, our guys, we've got some good players. Yeah. Our guys have got to make those plays. Uh, we did not do that consistently. Uh, I think it's uh, a, a couple of things. We have some new guys in there that are not maybe not used to ever, just don't have enough reps yeah. uh, under their belt, uh, both on offense and defense. But but our playmakers did not make the plays that we needed, and we made some in the second yeah. half, and it made it look a little better. And but but still, in the first half, we've got it. We've got to make plays consistently, just routine plays. We talk about that all the time. Well, they made a play that wasn't routine on their very first drive. In fact, they had a third and short. They get the first down by, what, half a yard maybe. And then they reach into their bag of tricks. They go flea flicker on you. Jared Johnson uh, got the handoff back to him and threw a strike to Ladarius Brown. How do you defend the flea flicker, and how hard is it to defend it well? Well, it's, it's not that hard to defend if you're looking at the right things. You know, you've got Jonathan Epps. They were picking on him. And those are they're good coaches over there. They thought, hey, this is a part-time corner, mm -hmm. so let's pick on him with a gadget play and hopefully try to get his eyes away from where they're supposed to. Jonathan saw the, uh, he saw the handoff. He's coming up to his run support, and, and he runs by him. That's a classic flea flicker. That's what you, that's what you look for. Uh, it wasn't a, a case where Epps was, uh, you know, not playing hard. He was trying to make a play, sure. and, but just not disciplined enough. But that's part of the issues. We've had so many injuries. We're having to use people on offense sure. and defense both, and that's just kind of, you know, that that uh, that happens at times. They run another trick play. They run a fake field goal. They get a touchdown. It's twenty-eight nothing, first quarter, uh, and yet your team, with Dallas Seeley on his first offensive possession after Parker McKenzie had started, he runs into the end zone, on, using his feet, and he's he's proven to be pretty slippery yes. and elusive. That's one of the reasons why you like to play him. It's 28-7. Their very next offensive possession, there's a play that one of your best corners, Jabari Butler, has in his hands. Coach, there was nobody in front of him. No, nobody. And that's what I mean. When you make, just make the routine yeah. play. The quarterback hit him right in the chest with the ball. He has a great break on the ball. Yes. And, but you got to make that play. If you're going to beat teams like that, uh, you got you got to make some plays like that. And, uh, if he runs it back, it's 28-14. Who knows what happened? The right. point is he didn't make it, that's and right. that, that led to – a lopsided first half score. Coach, you come back in the second half, and it is interesting when it's all said and done that the final margin was that first quarter total, 28 nothing. You lose 49-21. Somebody might say, well, you scored late. Well, they scored late as well. Sure. So when you add it all up, it's 21-21 last three quarters. When you look back at it, does that matter to you that it was 21-21 last three quarters? Is that, some, is that a small thing you can take with you, or do you say – what happened in the first quarter wipes all of that out. Well, in, in the game of football, you cannot measure everything by points. What, the only thing you can measure by points is a win and a loss. Mm -hmm. 
when you're when you're 28 to nothing down, you don't you're not measuring things by points. You start measuring things. Hey, what kind of quality plays are, are we are we making out there? Are we putting things together? Are we playing more consistently? And by and large, we did that in the second half. And 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 we've proven to where you know if we just do what we're supposed to do, do it consistently, we're going to score some points. Now, mm-hmm. will it be enough to to overcome a 28 to nothing deficit? Against a team like that, probably not. You need some good things to happen on your end. Well, you'll try to get some of those good things to happen today against the University of the Incarnate Word. We'll preview that ACU-UIW game a little bit later on. But as we go to break, take a look at scores from around the Southland Conference last week and take a look at McNeese State's win over Central Arkansas. It leaves the Cowboys as the only unbeaten team in the Southland Conference. Stay with us on the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collum Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. No one has more tackles in the Southland Conference than Sam Denmark. I finally got him away from the ball and into the studio to learn more about his game. First, let's jump in. This season already, you have by far the most tackles on the team. Uh, just talk about how do you get to the ball every time? Well, you know, um, our defense sets up the linebackers perfectly to get to the ball, and I happen to be the middle linebacker. So I, um, I'm able to get to both sides of the field every single play. And it comes with great play from our defensive line. They're always uh, keeping guys off of me and allows me to go make the tackles. And our defensive scheme really sets me up well for that. And it's honestly uh, just love for the game as well, too. I love the run of the ball. It's what we're taught every single day. Our coaches harp on it. And when you translate that into a game, it really uh, shows in our tackle stats. Mm -hmm. And looking at last year, you got to be under some pretty big guys in ACU football, uh, Angel Lopez, Justin Stevens, who's now one of the coaches. Um, Just talk about what you learned in your freshman year and now as a sophomore being a leader. Well, freshman year, of course, and you know, the coach is always telling us just to keep swimming and just sort of hive because you're a freshman. It's very difficult, but having those guys around, they taught me so much about the game. It wasn't just going out there doing my little job. I had to understand what was going on with everyone else. And as a freshman, you can't really do that. You can't learn everything that's going at once. You're going to have to just take it one step at a time. And what, playing with those guys, I mean, I couldn't have done it without them. Justin Stevens, Angel Lopez, they were telling me what to do half the time out there last time uh, last year. And, that was great. I loved playing with him. And this year I had to come in knowing what I was doing a lot more. But I know um, it's still very beneficial to have uh, Coach Stevens with us. He uh, gives me tips every single day, and I'm a much better linebacker thanks to him. And we miss those guys, uh, those guys greatly. But, you know, um, growing up a little more this year has helped me to learn what's going on, and I'm still learning each and every day. There's still a lot to learn. Yeah, looking at the season as a whole, you guys have had a couple tough games, especially on the road. Um, what do you hope to get out of the, se- the rest of the season? Well, you know, we just got to keep improving. Um, our loss against UCA was not very good as a team. You know, we, uh, we weren't very satisfied at all with any of it. And then we, uh, we came back and we tried to improve each week. We know that um, we're going to face a lot of great teams. And, you know, going against Lamar, they were a great team. They had a great uh, running back. And unfortunately, they, uh, they got us a little bit. And, but at the same time, um, when we were looking at the film and everything, we did improve in a lot of areas. And that's what we got to do the rest of the season. We just got to keep taking steps to improve every single week. But, you know, um, coming into a week like this, we got to take a, a much bigger step, of course, facing a great Sam Houston team. But each week, we're just really looking to improve. Denmark continues to lead the defense in tackles. Past football stars, as well as other ACU sports legends, were inducted into the ACU Sports Hall of Fame. Here's Hannah Knoll with a glimpse at the ceremony, as well as other sports happening on campus. Soccer took two wins this weekend against Lamar University in McNeese State. The team started the weekend with a 6-2 victory over Lamar with six goals from six different players. The Wildcats then went on to beat McNeese State 3-2 in double overtime for their final away game of the 2015 season. This victory gave head coach Casey Wilson his 100th career match win since he began in 2007. The match was sealed by a game-winning penalty kick by junior Maria Gomez in the 102nd minute. ACU now has six wins, one loss, and one tie in conference play, and they are on a five-game winning streak. The Wildcats are back on home turf Friday at 7 p.m. to face Stephen F. Austin. Cross-country traveled to Arkansas this weekend to compete in the Little Rock Invitational to close its regular season play. All eight members of the women's team placed among top 25 in the 5K course. Alexandria Hackett placed first with a time of 16 minutes, 22 seconds, and teammate Diana Garcia-Munoz was just behind her in second place. 
The men's team was led by senior Daniel Block with a fourth place finish and season best time of 24 minutes 42 seconds in the 8K. The Wildcats will return to the track on October 30th in Huntsville to compete in the Southland Conference Championships. Seven ACU sports legends were inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame last Friday. Highlights include retired NFL player Danielle Manning, whose number 11 ACU jersey was retired over the weekend. Other inductees include Teresa Rubart Grounds, who still holds the women's basketball team's record for total rebounds, rebounds per game, and rebounds in a game. Past athletic directors Don Drennan and Jared Mosley were also both inducted to the Hall of Fame. Drennan received the Lifetime Achievement Award and Mosley was recognized for his work as a basketball star in the 90s as well as his leadership guiding the Wildcats into Division I in the past few years. Volleyball suffered a 3-1 match loss to conference leader Texas A&M Corpus Christi on Saturday. This brings the team to 4-4 in conference play and 4-17 overall. The Wildcats return home Thursday for the start of a three-match homestand against New Orleans. The team faces southeastern Louisiana on Saturday and Nickel State on Monday to finish the home slate for the 2015 season. That's all for this week. I'm Hannah Nall. Back to you, Shara. Thanks, Hannah. Stay with us on the Ken Collins Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Column Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Take a look at today's schedule for teams in the Southland Conference and take note, McNeese State, the only unbeaten team in the conference, hosting Northwestern State, the Demons, coming off their first win of the season, an impressive win at that. Stephen Rivers, the younger brother of San Diego Chargers quarterback Phillip Rivers, now leading the Demons offense. They beat Lamar last week and now... They'll get to tangle with the Cowboys down in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Well, today in San Antonio, ACU is at Incarnate Word. 21 to nothing coach who beat the Cardinals last year here at Shotwell Stadium. But this is, this is a Cardinals team that's, that's taken a little bit of a leap, isn't it? They, they went into the fourth quarter against UTEP of the FBS, tied, only lost by 10, and they put the hammer down on Northwestern State a couple of weeks ago. Sure, you can see just within the league, every team is improving. You know, Northwestern, they've bumped their head a little bit, and Stephen F. Austin have. But those are good programs, and they'll be back on their feet possibly toward the end of this year. But you look at teams like, uh, like Incarnate Word, uh, teams like Lamar mm -hmm. who, have act, who have taken a big jump. I mean, you don't go to UTEP and play them down to the wire and not have some good football players. Uh, so they are, uh, I mean, they're playing, they, they beat, uh, beat Northwestern Louisiana, uh, scored a lot of points on them. Yeah. So uh, we've got our hands full down in San Antonio. Coach, looking at your offense, last week after the game, you talked about how you will use both Parker and Dallas. Looking at uh, their defense, what do you have to do on offense? Well, we've got to execute better. When you, when you break down our first half against, uh, uh, against uh, really against our last three po opponents, we're not playing well. We're not doing what, what we're supposed to do. We're not playing at a level that is, that is worthy of Wildcat football and of, for, of years past. It's very disappointing. A lot of that has to do with new guys being in new spots. You can't just put a new guy in there and expect the, the machine to keep going. I mean, it, it, there's some growth processes in there. Uh, but we've, we feel like we're, our pieces are in the right spot now. And they've played enough football together to where, you know what, hey, we, ought, we ought to be able to play four quarters now of quality football. Just to clarify, when you say we're not playing the way we expect, that's, that's taking into account how good the other team is, right? So you're factoring in how good those opponents are, but you're seeing plays unmade. Yes, right? yes, I am. Like, we didn't, like, we're seeing normal blitzes, we're seeing normal fronts, normal coverages, but we're not handling it as clean as okay. we should. And it's because of our because of our new guys mm -hmm. and that's that you know that's disappointing when when you get a when you get a basic blitz and you don't handle it properly you know that's a problem and and, and that's a that's a rep issue it's a personnel issue you figure it out and you get it ironed out and we're, we're in the process of doing that let's talk about your defense against the incarnate word offense one of the reasons why the cardinals have made a jump you look at their quarterback trent Britton, coach he's second in the conference in total offense behind one guy jared johnson of sam houston state uh, who, who is as good as any player maybe as there is in FCS. 
how good is Trent Britton and, and how much is does he make that offense go? Oh yeah, that that offense is is centered around Trent Britton. You saw that last year when mm -hmm. they didn't have him, yeah. uh, and they struggled. Of course, a lot of people struggle without their starting quarterback, but but he is a he is a fine athlete. He's an adequate passer. Sometimes he when he is on throwing the ball, he can make throws all over the field. Um, we've just got to get a little pressure on him. If we don't pressure the guy, uh, he's going to be able to sit there and throw it, and he's going to be able to tuck it, and run it. And the thing that he really does, that he'll hurt you with his feet. He'll move the chains over and over with his feet. So uh, we've got to be mindful in our rushing lanes, and uh, we've got to put a little heat on him. Well, it should be uh, a big day down in San Antonio, ACU, against its former Lone Star Conference foe in the uh, University of the Incarnate Word. That's a 2.30 kickoff. It's uh, like last week, and frankly, like next week, the game been moved from 2 o'clock to 2.30. And we'll have the broadcast for you, Lance Fleming and I, beginning at 2 o'clock on the ACU Sports Network. For Sharon Nemiroski and for Coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Enjoy the game today, and we'll see you next week.